The heart and soul of the Cornucopius metaverse philosophy is the home bubble, which every player is entitled to in this free-to-play MMORPG. Let's talk about it. Welcome Lake Lakeham Crypto, my name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice, do your own research and own your own decisions. Before we get started here, I want to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Climate Neutral Cardano. This organization is a group of Cardano stake pool operators that are aiming to make Cardano the most climate friendly blockchain in the space and they're currently running a raffle with over 8,000 ADA worth of prizes up for grabs. This raffle will be running up until August 18th of 2023. You can pick up a raffle ticket with the link down in the description below and if you're watching this video after that date, you can still go to any Cardano NFT marketplace, pick up one of Cornucopia's NFT to tree assets, and continue the mission of making Cardano a at least net zero impact on the global environment. And now let's get back to the video. We are continuing this series on the Kopi Wiki page where we try to draw out speculative theories from the tiniest details in the Kopi Wiki page that nobody is paying attention to. Because why would they? Do remember that the Kopi wiki page is a living document that will see information added, removed, and altered for as long as Cornucopius lives and as things really start to ramp up over this next couple of years as things start to go live. On this first point, my first thought was why are we storing NFTs underwater? Is nobody worried that this is going to ruin them? On a more serious note, we know that water is going to play an important part in the development of the zone lands, which means one of two things about the water that exists in the home bubbles. Either that water will be not removable from your home bubble and it will be specific to the ecosystem of your home bubble, or my preferred outcome would be that the water would be pretty unsubstantial and finite to the point where it could be removed and used in zone land, but it would kind of be unsubstantial to the impact and production of the overall supply of water in the zone lands, so much so that it probably would be inefficient actually to try to harvest water from the home bubbles and bring it into the zone lands. Also, if water was removable, then it might also mean that you could add water to your home bubble. And how cool would it be to like make a underwater home bubble? Make it kind of like a snow globe type of situation? Somebody should consider that. This next point is something that I found to be kind of interesting just as a content creator, a live stream television set. This is an example of why you should be reading every single page of the Kopi Wiki page because there are little bits of information that are scattered throughout this thing that reveal tiny little details that actually inspires more questions than it does answers. Like what exactly will this TV be live streaming? Would this content be strictly for in-game related content or would you be able to do external plugins from outside the Cornucopius metaverse? Could you, in theory, host Super Bowl parties in Cornucopius? That is, if you watch sports. I don't, but I could certainly see the value. This point here is kind of baffling to me because uh, the concept of metaverse law and metaverse law enforcement is something that I, I don't quite understand yet. I understand it in something like Grand Theft Auto, where the point of the game is to carry out criminal activity. But I, I didn't really think that there's an element of that in the Cornucopius metaverse. Obviously, when there is an understandable objective to that, then there has to be a challenging entity that will stop you from doing that. But in Cornucopius, I, I don't really get it. I'm fascinated, but I still don't understand. When the Kopi Wiki page uses the word evolve instead of the word age or grow old in reference to animal companions, I'm intrigued by that choice of words. If they didn't mention specifically cats and dogs, I might have almost suggested a sort of Pokemon-like evolution sort of situation, but it does seem like the, the theme of Cornucopius is a very sci-fi-esque sort of theme, so we could very well see different species of animals that we've never seen before in reality. 
if I'm being realistic, I'm betting that we're probably gonna see just regular animals that age in set stages of time, but it's still interesting to think, and we have seen some talk of a sort of a Pokemon battler type of mechanic, but not something that's gonna be necessarily central to the game, so we're gonna have to wait for some more information in this area. The community has been begging for more information on how in-game economics is going to work in regards to commodities that are farmed and a more liquid, fungible sort of in-game currency. In this case, it very much makes sense to me and seems very similar to what we've seen in classic MMORPG games like Old School RuneScape, where you can take something like wood or any other in-game commodity and go into any marketplace and sell it on the spot for whatever the uh, market price is at the time. This is one area that I think we can see based on previous games models, how liquid is actually going to be. You know, we never have to rely on players to be able to sell assets with because there will be a constant market that exists in game. But what does surprise me here is that selling any assets to any in-game marketplace is going to contribute to the district scoring. Let me explain why. I fully expect buying assets to contribute to in-game market activity and district scoring because that's legitimate economic activity. You buy an asset so that you can use that asset to go and create more value elsewhere in the ecosystem. But Selling assets doesn't really have the same effect. It allows players to add to district scoring without actually creating any additional value beyond what they've put into it. They've gotten the value out of it already. You could theoretically get players that go and buy up in-game assets, wait for those assets to get more scarce, and then resell them on the market for a profit. This is something that happens in regular markets on a regular basis, uh, and, and it's, it's definitely an important role that is played because it helps assets to discover a real, actual asset price. That's important. But it is still kind of weird to me that selling contributes to district scoring, and I, I don't know what there is to stop people from just kind of recycling everything, purchasing assets off of the market, reselling them only to boost district scoring without actually putting any time or effort into building things and creating that value in the ecosystem that we really want to be seeing within this metaverse. I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep with all of that. I know that that's not as interesting as it is to some people as it is to me, and I'm certain that 0% of my audience is about ready to grab their pitchforks and protest cornucopious making, buying, and selling something that contributes to district scoring, because like, oh, the audacity, the chaos. I'm still gonna hold to the opinion that I think that just buying should contribute to district scoring, but I would trust the cornucopious team over my own opinion, because I know that they've got some pretty high-level service providers that are able to run these different factors through these algorithmic uh, programs that are able to spit out outcomes of different factors that are put into it. So uh, Cornucopius is definitely light years ahead of where I am as to what the outcomes of things could be, because they've seen a thousand different scenarios of how this could turn out. So it's interesting to see. That about covers the home bubble section of the Kopi Wiki page. If there was anything in this section that caught your eye that deserves some wild speculation, be sure to throw it down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose, learn as much as you can about this space, and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.